Where's the rabbit's foot? Oh man, they dragged Philip Seymour Hoffman into this, didn't they? Also, it took J.J. Abrams all of 45 seconds to turn the Mission Impossible franchise into an alias spin-off. You don't care about these people now, but you will by the time we show you this scene again. Or something. It appears Julia has a strict Heinz policy for all her condiments. Hey, that's Greg Grunberg from Alias, and the first episode of Lost. You think this guy ever goes up to J.J. Abrams and says, Dude, you've got the power now. Give me a good role. Let me play Ethan's short round or something. I study traffic patterns. You can literally track the ripple effect of that action across a 200 mile stretch of road. Well, I found it interesting. Just because you suck doesn't make it boring. <laughs> Boobies! Damn, where am I? And who drew this dick on my face? I'm psyched that you're gonna be my brother, man. Discount Jesse Pinkman. This is Ready Travel Resort Services. This is clearly a freaking alias episode. Good God, he's hiding his spy shit from his loved ones, pretending to be someone else. Sooner or later, you're gonna introduce Rambaldi artifacts into this thing. Take some pictures of the party for me. I hope he keeps his receipt and bills the CIA for the price of this camera. Is it possible that the CIA downgraded their secret message delivery system? Yeah, let's forget MI2, but those were some slick-ass sunglasses. It appears they have a hostage. We believe it's Agent Ferris. Normally we would disavow- But have you seen Agent Ferris? She's Carrie Russell, and she's super hot. So the disavowing will be put on hold. <sighs> Tom Cruise riding a motorcycle cliche. Dude clearly said, Wheels up at sunrise if you have a change of heart. But here's Ethan, arriving at a time where these shadows on the ground suggest the sun is already directly overhead. He's five or six hours late, but they still waited for him. In case you confused it with Berlin, Madagascar. Vascular ID? For real? <laughs> Why would 14 bad guys and a hostage set up shop in a place like this without setting up cameras, or at least lookouts and sh at some point, we gotta go over this whole getting married thing. Because I'm a man, and men tease and scold other men for getting married, even if they're out in the field on a dangerous mission. You'd think J.J. Abrams would be above the I-don't-know-what-the-hell-is-going-on action scene, but he's not. Turn off your transmitter! I've got something really important to say that I will never be able to tell you because I'm going to die soon. But it probably has something to do with one of our agents being a bad guy. Probably Billy Crudup, that asshole. Wow, she was just in a drug-induced stupor, having been beaten up. He gave her an adrenaline shot, and I almost sinned how easily she was able to hobble along after that. But now this sh Come on, where the f did all these dudes come from? Why didn't Luther supergun their asses with everyone else? How did this thing go from empty to full of f***ing dudes? And if not for that, she'd have been able to already tell him the important thing she wanted to tell him. <laughs> what? Makes for a cool shot, I guess, but there is no way in hell they're all arriving back at the van at the exact same time. These late bad guys are super late. What the f*** have they been doing this whole time? Were they just shot out of the primordial ooze just so they could get blown up? Oh, come on, you brought a portable CT scanner? Guys, the missiles are on! That's scary, but why did it take so long? They've been following him for like two minutes. Okay, that was lucky. We only get one of those. Until it happens again on the second missile. Also, the bad guys aren't immediately firing another shot. They injected you with a time release charge. Because an instantaneous charge isn't goddamn good enough. Hey. You don't need 30 seconds. Or in movie time, the equivalent of two Super Bowl halftime shows. Okay, I can see why the good guys went through the windmill, since they're evading an attack. But the bad guys? Did they have any reason to risk their lives other than challenging Darwin? It's unacceptable the chocolate makes you fat, but I've eaten my share, and guess what? You know what the Mission Impossible series needed? The hard-ass, totally unfair boss dude who thinks any kind of failure is avoidable. I mean, surely you have better ways to use Lawrence Fishburne, right? I've been trying to bring Davian down since the day that I got here. Does that mean you, too, are a failure at CIA? Your operation has achieved one thing. You have reminded Davian that he is winning. And that's what we hate the worst at the CIA, is bad guy self-affirmations. Movie stops for a funeral because the mostly minor character was played by Carrie Russell. Unimportant training flashback. Sent you a piece of mail from Berlin. Instead of simply finding a way to call you about this extremely important information. Magnetic means encrypted. Yeah, I know that. But Luther, the audience doesn't. Yeah, well, I'm assuming it's like a code word for something he's about to sell to an unspecified buyer. Maybe it's just a really, really expensive bunny appendage. I mean, Simon Pegg is just taking over for the Marshall Flinkman character in Alias here. So we're watching a movie about a technology that could be the end of the world. So of course, the protagonist's fiance works at a hospital. Ethan, what's going on? Skip. Follow me. The vows you're about to take are not to be taken without careful thought and prayer. Jesus, how long of a break does she get? <laughs> Times like these, I really start to think of... <laughs> Whatever happened to Naya from the last movie? Hereby take Ethan Matthew Hunt. Oh yeah, I forgot something. Skip. I did remind him that the Vatican is the Vatican. Character who helped Ethan infiltrate the CIA in the first movie continues to think there's no way they could possibly infiltrate something else just as difficult. Just in case you confused it with Rome, Argentina. Do you mean to tell me that there are no guards here? And no one sees Ethan walking around the Vatican grounds about to shoot a thing towards their cameras? Also, I love how outside the Vatican walls it's a vast wasteland filled with no homes, businesses, or pedestrians. I'm surprised there's not a tumbleweed in this shot. They know this camera is out. That asshole radioed about it. So how is he able to just lie here on top of the wall with nobody in any of all those f***ing windows back there spotting it? I want to bitch about no one seeing this sh either, but honestly, do we have to have some version of this in all Mission Impossible movies? <laughs> Vatican super secret hey don't look in here asshole spy room is made of all glass. Video is looped. Go. You'll be able to run down a passageway without running into anybody. 
Do guards at the Vatican really not know each other to the point that some dude they've never seen before can just wave people inside without consulting a higher authority? Maggie Q seems kind of provocatively dressed for the Vatican, but I'm not complaining. 23 months, that's as long as it'll last. Of all the things about this movie that might bother me, Luther constantly giving Ethan relationship advice throughout is near the top of the list. I mean, Luther? Movie goes full face off here by glossing over the clear and obvious weight differences between these two people, not to mention the three inch height difference. And one little camera movement and voila, instant Philip Seymour Hoffman. I admit it's a pretty cool thing happening right before your very eyes, but fake as shit doesn't become real as shit with a couple of face tugs. Also, this whole plan relies on Davian going to the bathroom, but what if he never had to go to the bathroom? I admit there's a decent chance he would have to go, but what if he didn't? Your plan is fucked. You broke into the Vatican for nothing. Much like the guard in T2, Davian does not scream with terror upon seeing his long lost twin. Which is good for the plot, because there are guards outside the bathroom ready to defend this man's life. Meanwhile, why does Ethan even leave that to chance? Well, it's been two minutes. Better go check on him so that we can have a scene that's unnecessarily suspenseful while they upload Ethan's Davian voice. I'm fine, wait outside. But you are three inches shorter. That's amazing and concerning, but whatever. So we see Declan lowering Davian down somewhere. I guess it's the sewers. But the next time we see the whole team together is on a boat, where I guess they somehow dragged an unconscious Davian out without anyone seeing him and put him in the trunk or something. Ethan Hunt and his team just grabbed the Owen Davian in Rome. You know, Brassel said he'd been searching for Davian for years, but the guy always goes to the Vatican for this one party every year. So could they not camp guys outside the Vatican and arrest him somehow? Maybe at his hotel or something? Why couldn't he catch this dude? Ethan. You mean you heard Luther say Ethan's name while you were dangling precariously from the airplane with 575 mile per hour wind in your face? Not only that, some seriously unprofessional behavior leads to Luther saying Ethan's name out loud. Ethan, we got it. Lindsay's micro dot. It's a video file. Well, convenient you sent this message in a complicated enough way that it took until this point in the plot for Luther to decipher the message. I traced the call through the IMF network, and this is what came up. The call to Davian came from Brassel's office. Which means it's that asshole Billy Crudup, and this is some more misdirection. Besides, who's stupid enough to make a call to Davian from their office when they told you to track that person? Your CIA skills were called into question unfairly earlier, but now... It's Brassel. I think he's working with Davian. Also, oh no, their CIA boss is evil? That's something I've never seen in a Mission Impossible movie, since the first one. Also, this seems like a dangerous f***ing escape attempt. You're sure that your guys can aim those missiles in such a way that it won't hurt Davian? Cars! Crashes! A dozen guts in five seconds! Bad guys say, screw the missiles on this airplane, we'll let guys with guns on the helicopter decide this. Helicopter guys not only wait forever to shoot Ethan, but move the helicopter out of the perfect position to shoot him before trying to shoot him. And let's not forget the trained soldier's horrible aim. Get down! Stay down! Orders that should be unnecessary. This is a cool shot, and I love it, but the more I look at it, the less sense it makes. Shouldn't the explosion, no matter what direction the missile came from, be blowing Ethan more toward the camera than off to the side? Also, missile impact will only cause maybe a bruise to Tom Cruise. Explosions usually just throw Ethan into things. They don't hurt or kill him. I don't know, looks like a pretty clear shot to me. How wide do you think that is? Like a couple car lengths, from solid footing to solid footing, right? Like 20 plus feet. The long jump record in real life is 29 feet 4 inches. So what I'm saying is that this, even with him barely making it, is some bullshit. Ethan suddenly has no aim despite mowing down fools the whole movie. Slow motion, bad guy got away, realization shot. Julia's in trouble, so there's instantly an awesome car Ethan can jump into after all the shit just went down on the bridge. And luckily, no traffic or wreckage to worry about. Julia's on break, so of course she's walking down the hall where Michael Myers or Jason or Freddy is probably hanging out. I was wondering if you knew where I might find this patient. Yep. Based on a simple phone call, this creepy guy somehow knew Julia would be in this abandoned part of the hospital, where I've been told you can still hear the screams of all the mental patients who died there in the 1930s. Jules? You hung me outside of an airplane. God damn it, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Even posthumously, you're earning back sins for your greatness. Two sins removed for this awesome performance. IMF guys congregate at the hospital to catch Ethan, because they knew he'd be here, of course. I guess they tracked his phone once he fled the bridge? Who knows? Later, Musgrave says he tracked the call Davian made to him, but they would have had to intercept the call and get to the hospital in world record time to do that. Also, real IMF people come with orders to take Ethan, just as he finds out he has 48 hours to save his wife. Even if Davian or Billy Crudup somehow orchestrated this, the timing is more than convenient enough to deserve sinning. Dozens of trained agents somehow allow Ethan to run away. Not one of these three assholes even looks at super spy prisoner Ethan Hunt during this elevator ride. Hunt was flagged on sub-basement 9. Jesus, is he imitating Brassel right now? Who needs a fucking voice modulator when you can sound exactly like the person you need to sound like? Security channel's jammed. Hunt must be holding down the transmit button. Is that all it takes? Is the CIA seriously not using a better radio system than my 18plex movie theater used in 1999? And there's definitely no way I can get to an intercom of some sort, or call anybody important, or have any other way of communicating to our agents, as long as our radio is jammed. Irony, just in case you confused it, with Shanghai, Wisconsin. I hear next door John Cusack is going crazy with all that paranormal activity going on in the room. And Samuel L. Jackson is somewhere around because he's always around. Wow, in the Mission Impossible world, all you need to pick a lock is a couple spare electrical wires. And we have two hours. 
before they kill my wife. So you're expecting to be able to get the gear you need to do this insane plan, and then actually carry out the plan, and then call Davian about the rabbit's foot in two hours? Also, I was actually about to give the movie credit for at least 33 hours, since it took very little time for Ethan to break out of the CIA and get on a plane, which should take around 15 hours to fly to Shanghai. Even with that amount of time, I wasn't going to give them a chance to save Julia's life. But now we have two hours? You can't even set up the plan in that amount of time. You got 18 minutes. Oh, sure. Just make it an even more ridiculous task. Might as well say, you've got 30 seconds. We'll simply bypass time by using this time machine I made out of Tupperware. Hey, everybody, I'm giving out wings. When I was little, I had a cat. And he used to run away all the time. This is what we get to see instead of whatever bullshit Ethan has to do to get the rabbit's foot. It's like J.J. Abrams knew that his plan was such nonsense, it was better not to film it. Just assume he succeeds and we'll talk about a lost cat. I'm giving out wings! Okay, so he didn't fall to the ground, but at the height he fell and the velocity with which he crashed into that window, isn't he still dead? Lampost ex machina! Movie expects me to believe Ethan is going to drop the one thing keeping his wife alive. Apparently, traffic was not swayed by the giant truck that went over four lanes of traffic just a second ago, and now Ethan finds himself in the game Frogger. Ethan! Wow, that's Declan. He actually was able to make a beeline to Ethan in the middle of all that traffic. Amazing! You gotta get us out of here, I lost the signal! Well, of course you did. You're in the middle of Shanghai, that's practically nowhere. This car chase scene is filled with so much shaky camera movement, and so many edits, and confusion, why even bother keeping up? Alright, we're back to where we were at the beginning. Can we just go straight to the end of the countdown? We can just go straight to the end of the countdown, right? Right? You know, I really love Michael Giacchino, but he does a lot of his lost score in this movie. Oh no, the other CIA boss is evil? That's something I've never seen in a Mission Impossible movie, since the first one. Also, you didn't really think the CIA bad guy was going to be Lawrence Fishburne, did you? You never trust Billy Crudup, especially when death is on the line. So I'd had enough of Brazil and his sanctimony IMF executive director. He's an affirmative action poster boy. That's racist. This evil asshole spills his guts to Ethan for an entire minute before getting back to his plan. Why is Musgrave not putting this phone on speaker? Does his CIA training not tell him what a bad idea this is? God, if it wasn't for the motorcycle thing, there'd be a clear problem with the number of movies where Tom Cruise's character full out sprints. And holy shit, is he running? It's like they took the Tom Cruise running cliche and embraced it. Long shots like this make me wonder why we couldn't do that in earlier action scenes when it was way more than just running. But damn, this is a marathon, isn't it? How many takes did they do of this? I bet Cruise said, let's do at least 50. It's the Kubrick way, and I need the exercise. Superstar spy Ethan Hunt, everyone. Superstar henchman random somebody, everyone. Um, first rule of finding your wife held hostage is remove the tape from her mouth. You have maybe four minutes left. Whatever the movie decides, it's enough time to keep you alive. I don't know, I haven't figured that out yet. But I know when I survive this, I'm going to make a faster acting capsule, first thing in the morning. For any reason, Ethan gets his ass kicked by Davian. Jesus, dude, if you have the energy and the wherewithal to do this, why were you letting Davian kick your ass so hard a minute ago? What kind of asshole speeds through a little alley like this? And how did he build up so much speed? And that vehicle's ground clearance was absolutely on point, at least from Ethan's point of view. Ethan's head is about to explode, but sure, let's do some nookie. How do you know so much about this? Julia, after being kidnapped and sent to Shanghai, and after you saw your husband running to save you, what the f do you think? And did you never see True Lies or Alias? What? Throw the switch on and off. Don't forget the off. You can bring me back. I realize he's in pain and freaking out, but Ethan could not be giving his wife more confusing instructions right now if he tried. Ethan MacGyver's a goddamn defibrillator using stuff and things. If you're married to Ethan Hunt, a five-second spoken word gun tutorial will make you basically an expert. Evil CIA guy gets the jump on novice gun wife, but she still wins this confrontation because climax. Come on, baby. <laughs> Movie tries to make you think Ethan Hunt is dead. You should know the White House has contacted me. There's a job that they are very interested in speaking with you about. Bin Laden? God bless you, Lawrence Fishburne. See you in the next move. Oh, no, well, wait, I won't. Sayonara, bitch. One thing. The rabbit's foot. What is it? Promise me you'll stay, I'll tell you. It's a MacGuffin. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. You hung me outside of an airplane. Uh, football practice. My God, he's got the voice of an angel. It's breathtaking. Where were the other drugs going? Uh, <laughs> that's it, buddy. Uh, you, buddy. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. Its origins, in fact, lie in the subject of land ownership. What? I've been trying to reach you. Oh, uh, I've been busy. Well. Clear your social calendar. Tommy, how's the peeping? And I'm gonna kill you right in front of her. Phil, mm -hmm. I will drop kick the f***ing dogs if they come near me. Please go the f*** away!
You know, in a scene they ended up cutting for time, they showed Ethan giving Carrie Russell a few Nature Box snacks after the adrenaline shot. Actually, there must have been several snack scenes that were cut, because without copious amounts of delicious and nutritious frequent snacking, none of this movie's antics would be possible. That's impossible. Thankfully for Ethan and you, there's Nature Box. Healthy, tasty snacks delivered monthly to your door. Insane variety. Decisions, decisions. Really tasty snacks. Everything's delicious. Brought directly to you. And the fine people at NatureBox are going to give you a free sampler box of their most popular snacks just for signing up. Go to naturebox.com slash cinemasins and you'll be on your way. I was 35. I started my life. Look, I honestly don't know how many of our viewers are secret agents, but I'm guessing it's in the thousands. And those people clearly need NatureBox. The rest of you, well, you're not Ethan Hunt, but it's not like you don't enjoy having yummy stuff that's accessible on the go, right? NatureBox.com slash cinemasins. You won't regret it.